Well, so begins our discussion of ancient astronomy. What did the ancient astronomers, people who lived a long, long time ago, what did they observe in the sky? This picture, the background image for this particular podcast, is a place in Peru called Machu Picchu. I've actually been there. In fact, I took this picture. And um, it is a place where they, uh, the ancient uh, uh, Quechua Indians uh, and uh, the, uh, the folks who live there, they built this city, and it really is a big astronomical observatory. That said, this is an ast astronomical observatory that... Um, that uh, they didn't have telescopes and cool tools like we have now. Now, before we dive into the ancients, we should say that we are kind of embarking on a tour of astronomy historically, and we're going to start today with prehistoric astronomy, uh, before history was written down, that's what prehistoric means, followed by classical, that'll be another podcast, a couple podcasts actually, followed by the Renaissance, followed by the Modern. That's where we live now, of course. So let's talk about prehistoric astronomy. Okay, what did the people see prior to 500 B.C.? What did they know about the sky? Now, before we can do that, we do want to have a little, just a brief conversation. Don't forget to pause the video to write the, uh, the text down. Is that um, there is a kind of a, a shame in our society that we live in. Is that most people today do not really understand the sky. Primarily because of a couple of factors. Number one is light pollution. Most people live in cities. Those cities have lights, uh, electric lights. Those lights cause the sky to be obscured. C-U-R-E-D, obscured, something like that. And you cannot see the brightness of stars. Okay, now if you live in a place where it's very dark, and there's not a lot of light pollution, and in fact most of the students at our school, at Midland Park High School, most of them do live in a place where there's not as many lights. But, you know, you go in, you turn the TV on at night, you don't go outside and see the stars. So a lot of people don't understand the night sky. Another thing, of course, that's caused this is air pollution smog. This is actually New York City in a, in a smog haze. And if that's the case, obviously the stars that are up there, you're not going to see anything. Okay? But what were the ancient people actually able to see? No, now remember, no electric lights, no TVs. When it got dark, it well, it just got dark, okay? Well, first of all, they were able to see the sunrise. Now, now we can see that, of course, now. Still see stunning, beautiful sunrises and sunsets, for that matter. But we were able to see sunrises. So they could see that the sun, as it uh, travels across the sky, well, it, it like moves. So their perception of the sun is that it moved because it kind of does. Turns out that they were actually wrong and that the earth is actually moving which makes the sun appear to move. The sun is actually is moving but not in the sense that they thought it did. Um, also they were able to observe the moon and this is the moon going through its different phases. Um, uh, all the different phases of the moon that you're probably familiar with. Okay. They were able to observe the seasons. Now I should just make a note. Make sure you continue to pause the video. I'm going pretty quick here. Here we have, um, we have winter. So they knew they had a season. That's, of course, followed by a summer. Or a spring. I knew that. <laughs> it didn't look right. Followed by summer. Summer. And followed by fall. Now, it depends on where you live. There might be the wet season and the dry season, etc. But they knew that there were seasons. And they were able to see the stars at night. The brightness of stars, it's really an amazing sight. If you ever get to a place that's obscenely dark, if you will, and it's a dark night, and even if the moon is not full, especially with a new moon, that means there's no moon visible in the sky, the stars become just brilliant in, in seeing them. So those are the things that they were to quickly see, but let's get some more and say what is more that they could learn, the ancient people, as they looked at the stars. It's not actually 1.2, that's a typo. All right, what did they do? First of all, they simply used their eyes. All they had at their disposal was just their eyes. So all they could do is stand at some place and look up. And as they looked up, what did they see? Okay, so what can you just see just with your eyes? All right, now let's start talking about some important uh, terms that we'll be using throughout the course of the year at least the semester. Is there such a thing called the celestial sphere? All right, everybody say celestial sphere. I can't hear you. Oh, there you go. You've got it. The celestial sphere. Okay, basically the celestial sphere is a sphere on the outside of the earth. So if I have the earth right here, you draw a line to the north celestial pole. So just come right out of the north pole, and this here would be the south pole, and you draw a line. The Earth, of course, rotates around that. We know that. that that's the 
called the celestial equator. And then the stars and the planets and whatever are somewhere along anywhere up here on this sphere that is some indeterminate uh, distance away. So it's just kind of a direction. This actually gives us like a coordinates, like latitude and longitude type things, not exactly, but for you to be able to determine where a particular star is. So they assume that all the stars are equally distant from the Earth. They aren't really, but let's just, for the sake of the uh, of the sphere, and then you make a dome uh, around the Earth. So you have this big, actually, sphere, a dome if you were just sort of sitting on this place right here, if you're looking from the northern hemisphere, um, as, the, as this would be. Okay, that's called the celestial sphere. We can kind of see it again. And this is the equator, the celestial equator right here. And the celestial equator is exactly in line with the... Um, with the equator, the actual equator uh, of the Earth, okay? It's called the celestial equator. Okay, and here's another way to look at it. And this shows the uh, backdrop of the star. And so here we have the uh, uh, celestial equator right here. And then if you're standing here in India, as it looks like, you know, what would you be able to see? You'd be able to see these different stars from the celestial equator, okay? Now what the heck is a constellation? All right. Now, constellations are the stars that form thick, fixed patterns in the sky. So the ancient people, they looked at the stars and they said, well, there's certain patterns. Some of them, they, they decided to make them look like animals, Leo, etc. Okay, so here example is, is what Leo looks like. He's kind of coming in and out, I think. So they, what they're doing is they're taking just the stars that make Leo right here, and they're going to reappear here in just a second over here. And um, it's going to form what they determine a shape, and they call that the lion, Leo the lion. Maybe, I'm not sure it completely looks like Leo the lion, but that's the case. Or Orion, if you look at the stars of Orion, these are the different stars right here. For example, here's the star Betelgeuse. You might have heard of that. Rigel, this is one of the brightest stars you can see in the sky. And this is Orion's belt. So if you look over here, this is the picture of Orion here. These three stars right here are the three stars of his belt. Um, Rigel right here is his foot. This would be his shoulder, which is Betelgeuse. And somehow they see out of these other stars, they see a sword. I'm not sure I always see it, but you know what? That's just kind of how it's done. So. Well, it turns out that there are approximately 88 different constellations. And you can see them here on the celestial sphere. And when you look at that, um, you can see all of the different. Here's the ecliptic, um, the Andromeda, Cassiopeia, here's the Milky Way, Pegasus, etc. But let's look at that kind of with our cool starry night program and see what that looks like. So this is what it looks like today. It's August the 12th and it's 12.22 in the afternoon. And though it's like the daytime, of course, we can still see, we can see what, what, what uh, constellations are actually present. We can't see uh, them because, of course, it's daylight. But if I were to fast forward this, let's fast forward this, we can see the moving. There's the sun moving outside of the screen. And as it moves, we're now getting to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. You can't really see these, but now, boom, let's stop right here. It's 9-11 in the evening. Okay, so now at 9-11 tonight, if we look up, that up tonight, you're going to see Sagittarius, you're going to see Capricornus, Aquarius, etc. So you can really see all of the different, uh, I'm just going to move it around to the southwest. Virgo is present if you look to the west. It, Ursula Major, which is the big bear thing, look off to the northwest. So these are the constellations. And this kind of, the program kind of shows us the uh, pictures that somehow out of these stars they get a bear. I can turn that off if I um, uh, go to my options and turn off the illustrations, I believe that turns it away. Yeah, no, and that's, that's the uh, labels maybe. No, that's the names, okay, labels, auto-identify, there we go. So here's the, the boundaries right there. I can just do the stick figures, and if we look at the stick figures here, I'm gonna close that out, this is what they look like, and you can somehow they get bears and whatever out of there. But these are the different constellations that will be up tonight at 9-11. So if now I pass forward it again, we can see the stars moving some more. So right around midnight right here, 1.43 in the morning it looks like, we'll be able to see Aquarius and, 
and Sculptor and etc. There's 88 of these and here comes the moon right here and the moon tonight will rise. It looks like at about 1 o'clock in the morning. Let's watch the moon rise. The moon's going to continue to go and continue to go and then eventually it's going to lighten up and then you will see the moon early in the morning. This morning as I was riding my bicycle I was able to see the moon um, this morning and it might even tell me if I click on there it's in the last quarter so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's waning. All right. Now, interesting thing is that the stars appear to move through the course of a night and actually through the course of a year. Let's take a look at this in my cool program that shows us the stars. So here I am looking south, um, southeast I guess, um, from somewhere near Pueblo, Colorado in the United States. And we can see the stars. Today is